One of the things I thoroughly enjoy about One Rental at a Time as it grows is we're getting more and more awesome people reaching out to us. I have the one and only Jesse Lang, who's been investing for 10 years, investing in the Midwest, executing yeah. Burr. Uh, so we're going to talk to Jesse about what she's done, where she's been, where she's going, all that good stuff. Jesse, how you doing? Hey, I'm doing great. Happy Friday. Happy Every day is Saturday, Jesse. Every day is Saturday. Every day is Saturday. <laughs> yeah, what a life. I love it. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Well, Jesse, do us a favor. Uh, introduce yourself to the audience. Yeah. Who are you? What you do? All that good stuff. And we'll kind of get into your story. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, like Mike said, my name is Jesse Lang and I invest here in Columbus, Ohio. Um, I started about 10 years ago, kind of as an accidental landlord. I, you know, grew up in Austin, Texas, and we were lower middle class, you know, nothing special, went to college like you're supposed to. And then they tell you, you know, get married, get a job and have kids and buy a house. And so, you know, I didn't do all of them, but I did do some of them. And I bought a crappy little condo in Austin for $92,000. And this was wow. like 20, 2012, 2013. Okay. Uh, and I had two roommates. I had my partner at the time and then a Craigslist roommate. So if that wow. dates, yeah, yeah, I know it was, it was pretty bold. I just knew I couldn't really afford the mortgage. And so I made do with what I had. And so, this so is I, 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 would, I would appeal this back. Cause again, that's, so yeah. you were house hacking before it was a term. Didn't right? even know it was a name. Yeah. Didn't know it was a thing. So um, I'm guessing it was at least a three bedroom, but maybe it was a two bedroom. I, I don't know. It was, uh, it was a three bedroom. Yes. Right. Yeah. Okay. So you had a three bedroom condo. Uh, did your partner share some of the cost or just yes. the Craigslist roommate? Okay. Yep. Yep. Right. So he paid uh, a third, she paid a third and I paid a third. All right. Oh, yeah. so you just, you just divided it down, you know, evenly. I was, you know, I was, yeah, I was still paying and then we all split the bills so I was okay. living and I'm telling 92 K like, I think the mortgage was like 800 bucks or something. So okay. it was still, we were still living pretty cheap. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So that's 2012, 2013. Um, you're, where do you go from there? So that's, so you know, couple, you're yeah, with the house. A couple, couple years go by, have my W2, you know, it's an entry level job. Not great, but I'm, I have almost no bills. So I'm saving up right. some money and my partner and I split. So this is just a couple of years after buying it, Austin, Texas. I knew it would be insane to sell it. Like I grew up there. I was watching what right. was happening. I I was like, I'm keeping this at all costs. Yeah. Right. Then I knew that I couldn't live there personally because, you know, the emotional ties. And oh, then okay. I knew that I couldn't just pay for a mortgage that no one was living in. So yeah. in the span of two weeks, I went from like a happy, healthy household to four college boys renting my house. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> and I joked that they could have easily stopped my real estate career before it even started if okay. they were terrible, but they were, they were fantastic. So I was like, okay, you know, this isn't so hard and was just fully making it up as I went. Like, I think uh -huh. I Googled like Texas lease agreement or something, yeah. you know, um, and I was doing it all wrong, but it worked out. Yeah. So yeah. I did it two more times. All right. I so you, so you, so you, uh, <laughs> you break up with your significant other, you, le you lease the place to four college guys. It works out. Where do you go? Yeah. So I was just renting a room from a friend because it was also quick. Yeah, I was there okay. six months or so before I could save up to buy another house and do it all again. Okay. It's still then, in Austin. Still in Austin. And a year later I did it all again. All right. So you're up to three house hacks, all, yeah. all single families, like condos, houses. Yeah. Yeah. The other two are like fully single family. Okay. So two single families in a condo. So we're probably what, 2015, 16 at this point. Yeah. Nailed it. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So I have roommates yeah. again. I mean, I'm the, most of them have worked out on Craigslist. One is actually like my best friend to this day. So uh, wow. it, yeah, it worked out. One was terrible, but you know, overall I'd say it was a good experience. And I, 2016 comes around. I've had my same job this whole time. I have had people paying me rent. I'm living for free, saving a ton of money. And I'm like really starting to realize the power of real estate, mm. but I don't take it seriously. So instead I quit my job and I go travel the world for a year. Wow. All right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I spent all of 2016 
living in 12 countries for one month each. What was your favorite? What was your least favorite? I just got to um, ask. So I know it's such a popular question. My favorite was actually in um, Cusco, Peru. Oh, which, Peru. Okay. I've been, yeah, I've been it Peru. doesn't. Yeah. The city itself is pretty touristy, but I had personally a lot of growth. Um, you know, really good health. I fell in love. Um, ah, you know, married oh, you today. Go. Yeah, married. Still married. So like, it, yeah, it all worked <laughs> out. Okay. Yeah, just I had some really good personal growth that year. Okay. Right. I'm sorry. The month, um, least favorite. We were in Phnom Penh and Cambodia, uh, and they're coming out of a genocide still, just a couple decades. And yeah, it was it was kind of hard. There's like a missing generation. Yeah. I mean, really, really. really. So it was it was kind of a hard place to be, but eye opening right. to the world. Yeah. So I I, I guess just staying because I had no idea where this conversation is going. So <laughs> twelve twelve countries, twelve months. Um, you had to be a different person at the end of that than the beginning, I'm guessing. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. I had traveled a decent amount through college. You know, like I said, we grew up, you know, lower middle class. So the second, and I was, I was making good money with real estate, just kind of making it up as I went. So I, every time I could travel, I've, I've spent a couple of years out of the country. So, wow. right. um, and you were able yeah. to do that mainly because you were accidentally a landlord and had three house hacks. That was, that was, maybe you had some savings obviously going into that year, but a lot of that was kind of, you know, doing it by the seat of your pants, house hacking, right? Yes. A hundred percent. I'm making it up by the third one. I kind of realized like what worked, what didn't, okay. but still I had no formal training, no coaching. It was like, what do I need today? Okay. Solve that problem. What do I need right. tomorrow? Solve that problem. Um, but one thing it did provide me, so the cash flow itself, I mean, I think I was making like $1,500 a month. Like when you're traveling, that actually doesn't get you super far. So I wasn't live, I wasn't fully living on the cash flow, but what it allowed was the security of if something went wrong, I knew that I had a backup plan. Right. So come like month eight, month nine, I was like, fully out of money. I blew through all my savings. Like, it was, you know, it was a life experience. What do you, yeah. what do you do? What do you yeah. Do? So yeah. blew through my savings and I, you know, I saw the writing on the wall and was like, okay, I should probably think ahead. So, <laughs> yeah. So like a baby, no money. Yeah. Think ahead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so about two months out before I really was like uncomfortable with my level of savings, I talked to my agent and was like, Hey, I'm going to sell a house. Okay. So I didn't know about refinancing at the time, which I like have, he's still my agent. So I kind of like, yeah, kick him. And I'm like, yo man, I just needed money. Yeah. You Come on, about, dude. Yeah. You yeah. could have told me to refi, but you, you're like, yeah. Okay. So I sold a house and I joked that it was like real life monopoly because, you know, ran out of money, sell a house. Now I have money. And yeah. I, so which one did you sell? What, you had three. Did you sell the first one? I sold, I sold number one. Yeah. The condo. Okay, so you sold the condo. Yeah. All right. And so it had, now, it now had, you're four years into it. You had some equity, I'm guessing. Yeah. 200 K of equity. Yeah. You I'll bought it for 92. It. You sold it for roughly 300. 300. Yeah. That doesn't suck. It does not suck. I mean, I got a deal and it needed a lot of work that we, I put in over time and the oh. market, just like, yeah. you know, okay. Austin, yeah. Texas, like that. Timing. I mean, yeah, was... I mean, timing, timing. But so, still, you, know, you suddenly go from broke to Monopoly Man. Yeah. Did those last three stops just you just balled out, or what's going on? No, that's not who I am. No, no, no. Okay, no. I, don't, I don't. I'm. Know. I am very. I'm only now ten years into investing, like kind of loosening my pocketbooks, and only a little bit. I'm. <laughs> I I'm like it. Like most I like investors, it. like I don't pay full price for anything. I'm so frugal. Like I drive a. I drive a Prius. Like uh, I have, uh, you are frugal. I like yeah. it. And it was until like two months ago, it was a 2006 Prius. Oh, but wow. I've upgraded to a 2021. I've upgraded. So I, I it, it looks better. <laughs> yeah. Dude, you are, you're a baller. I know. I know. And we have 70 units and I'm driving this car. Like, oh, I, I don't know. There's a lesson like, in that. There's a lesson yeah, in that. It really is. I mean, they say, like, you know, most investors, like, we won't pay full price for anything. No, if I'm going to get a discount, I'm not buying it. Oh, I love this. I love every part of this conversation. Okay. So you come back from this year of growth and finding your love of your life. 
you sold a house, you're a little bit more uh, flush with cash. Yeah. Do you come back to Austin or where do you go? Nope. So I knew I didn't want to go back to Austin. Uh, my wife was living in New York City. She knew that she didn't want to go back. I still, even though I made, you know, $200,000 on a house, I still wasn't taking real estate seriously. Yeah. I don't know what, I don't, I mean, I don't know Do what I was- you need to be hit with a hammer or something? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Know. I didn't have any mentors. I didn't have any coaches. I didn't have oh, wow. any, okay. I didn't know anyone in my entire life who was like doing real estate as a career. I didn't yeah. know it was an option. And this is, you know, I'm college educated, world traveled, but yeah. I never was- aware that I, that yeah. I could make, like, make this choice. Right. I, 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 believe me, my story is the same. I got to 30 years old with an advanced degree and, uh, as freaking accountant econ degree, no idea what real estate was. No idea. No, idea. it's crazy. It's crazy to think about. Yeah. I didn't right, know. It was so, a career. I just thought you could, I was like, cool. I made some money. Like this is great. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. So I I'm curious. So, so you and your wife, you come back, you go to how, where does Columbus, Ohio come from? I mean, yeah. Like, so, kind of uh, one of the <laughs> super random, one of the, I had never, I honestly, Texans were kind of in our own world. So I didn't even, I couldn't even <laughs> tell you where I, <laughs> I <laughs> the Texans are in their own world. I mean, oh, I'm glad you said that. Not me. <laughs> <laughs> it's no secret. It's no secret. It's no secret. Bigger in Texas, I don't even think, I don't even think I could have told you where Ohio was on a map. But I mean, honestly, it's north. It's I was north. like, oh yeah, like what Ohio? What? Who cares? So, <laughs> is that a state? Where is that? Is that a state? I know. What's going I, on? I think I've heard of it. That's about as far as I've got. So I, I this is this so is awesome. how I, I end up this. here. <laughs> in in a month six or so, we were supposed yeah. to be in Istanbul, but it was during the bombings. There oh, were you know uprising, that, yeah. uh, uprising. So, yep. um. We rerouted last minute to London hmm. and okay. spent a month in London. I was introduced to a brewery called Brewdog. I don't know. Yeah. yeah know so that. if you know, if you know Brewdog, uh, oh, very nice. Yeah. So if you know Brewdog, there's 70 or so locations around the world. I kind of fell in love with the brand. They have a investment model. I invested some money. So then we both knew we didn't want to go back to where we were from. And okay. Brewdog was coming to Columbus as the uh, as the okay. first the first like brewery stop in the U.S. They built a brewery facility, uh, tap room. There's a nice. hotel out there, so um, it's like the size of a Walmart. I mean, it's wow. yeah, yeah, it's, okay. it's a huge deal. So I applied and got a job on their like commercial build out team. My background's in project management. So I was building bars. I was built a restaurant, wow. like built a hotel okay. on the commercial side. So this uh, is where, where are we now in the timeline? Like 17? 2017. Yeah. Okay. 2017. Got me to, All right. got me to Columbus. It got us to Columbus, I which like it. I right. never in a million years would have moved here. Like I'm telling you, it was so far. I mean, I probably would have never moved like, honestly. Right. Yeah. So, okay. So was there 18 months? It was fun. I loved it. Um, the whole time I was going to my Rias, I was meeting people. I ah, was, we're starting to get serious, starting to get serious. But I, and you know, so many people in their corporate jobs have like the golden handcuffs. I, and I'll just be transparent with your audience. Like they were paying me $45,000 to run multi-million dollar projects. Mm. It, no, yeah, there was a huge misalignment. So yeah. I think I, I was like, I still had like the, you know, golden, like the first six months, was, everything was bright and shiny and nothing was wrong. Yeah. And then like holes started being poked. And I'm like, you know, I'm working way too hard for someone else. So yeah. I'm being introduced to like real estate as a career through my okay. RIA, meeting people who like are really successful and they're down to earth. And, you know, I thought maybe like a real estate investor, you have to have a ton of money or you have to, um, I don't know, just be super smart or well-connected, whatever it is. Right, no, right, right. you don't. No. I'm meeting people that, that aren't that. Wow. Okay. So I'm being introduced to, okay, this is a career and the career I thought I wanted is fun. Garbage. <laughs> yeah. Fun, but like I'm living paycheck to paycheck and I'm right. working way too hard for someone else. Okay. I like it. 
All right. So, so then I, now you're in Columbus. You guys still have the two units in Austin, right? Still have two in Austin. Okay. Yeah. Still didn't Rhea. know my refinancing. Uh, <laughs> gosh. Yeah. Unfortunately. So I'm down to one, but I know better now. So there you go, there you I go. did end up selling another one to start my real estate journey. Okay. All right. So again, so, I know. Yeah. Go ahead. yeah. I know that, um, you know, I just said, you don't need a ton of money. And then I turn around and say, well, I sold a house and now I have a ton of money. I actually didn't like, I mean, we were paying stuff off. We were, I, like I'm saying, I was making no money for a couple of years. So, um, I don't, I, I needed some help. <laughs> yeah, you some, so, so yeah. what was that? What, what did you start looking for? What inspired you at Urea? Did, was it the whole Burr concept that someone introduced to you, some speaker or what nope. did you, did you nope. burr again? What you do? And what did you nope. do in Columbus? First? I didn't. I didn't actually start burring until January 2021, and I'll get to that. So I went full time real estate August 2018, but oh, okay. I was right. I was wholesaling everything. Okay, so you were wholesaling. Yeah. So you were buying. So were you buying out of the MLS? Were you doing mailers or what? what how Direct to seller you? marketing. I did through my RIA. I did like a wholesale academy type thing. Okay. Learned how to wholesale, didn't make any money for six months, blew through a ton of money, like was yeah. like, oh my God, this is a huge thing. Yeah. yeah. I made my first $5,000 wholesale fee. And I'm telling you, it felt like just all the money in the world. That is and awesome. My first buyer was Michael Jackson. Really? <laughs> I mean, not the the Michael yeah, Jackson. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. a Michael Jackson. Yeah. So, Michael so Jackson. Then- You'll never so forget that. That man, I'll never forget him. Yeah. He was a good there guy. Go. All right. So you're hoteling in 18. You could do that through 19 and 20. Um, you got an estimate how many transactions you were a part of approximately? Uh through those years, I have 30 to 40. I mean, oh, nothing there you go. So it's we're just once, one to two once a month. it started, once it started, that's the what I want people to hear is once you because everybody goes through that dry six months where they question oh themselves, what's going on, blah, blah, blah. Then you get the first one, you get proof of concept, you get a little better. Then the deal flow starts. That's what I'm hearing from you. Yeah. Yep. So it was a slow trickle, but it did pick up and I was able to save capital to start buying and Ah. keeping stuff. Because remember, like I had gone through this. I bought three rentals with owner occupant financing. I knew that real estate's sweet, but I was like, oh, 20% down. Like I don't have that much money. So I'm saving 20%, saving 20%. Oh man. We ended up with about 11 units that way, doing it the wrong way. I mean, knowing what I know now, I call them my early mistakes (laughs) (laughs) because I I didn't know. I I mean, I was a newbie, right? And so- So so again, I want to highlight what you're doing. So you're you're creating chunk money with hoteling, right? Creating that margin. You're saving that money. Then it sounded like you're just going back to banks and buying with 20% down. So what sounded yep. like? Yep. Were you also moving in and making them house hack again? Or were these are just straight up? No, so, yeah. So thankfully, since I moved to Columbus, I've never had to have a roommate again. Okay. Um, I, we've upgraded our house every couple of years since we've been here. Like I love my home now. I If you told me to get a Craigslist roommate, I would tell you, screw off. Like, <laughs> yeah, not <laughs> happening. Even yeah, though those worked out at the beginning, not happening. Yeah, yeah, that's when I was young and much more mobile. I mean, we're like pretty established now. So not happening. Um, okay. But I was, yeah, so I was buying with 20% down. So it was taking so long yeah. to buy anything because I was having to save 30, 40, $50,000. Mm-hmm. We were buying four units and, you know, that kind of thing. But I knew the power of real estate and was like, there has to be a better way. So okay. I got a mentor. I got a mentor January, 2021. And the entire message. So by that point I was wholesaling, wholesaling. I had dabbled in flips, dabbled in Airbnb. I got my real estate license. Wow. Uh, I was, I was doing it. I You're doing it, doing it all. Yeah. I don't just sit around like, I guess not. I'm, yeah. I'm always doing something. So over those couple of years, I tried everything. And my mentor said, stop all of that. Nice. Pick the one you like and get really good at it. So become elite at something. Yes. Correct. Yep. So I was just like kind of okay at a bunch of stuff and nothing really was taking off, just kind of spinning my wheels. Mm. So I got super clear about Burr. I knew that long-term rentals was the way to go. Like I made 200K in 
buy, a couple buy, years. Inflation is a feature, not a bug, right? Owning assets is the way to go. Got Correct. It. Correct. And I knew I wanted to be wealthy, not rich, uh, not only rich, right? So I knew this was a long-term game. So I knew it was long-term rentals and I knew um, that the way I was doing it wasn't right. So I was introduced to Burr, was like, Phew. you know, it, it all just clicks. And yeah. since it, it really it, tied together everything you did, right? You know how to market, get off market deals. You know yes. how to negotiate a price. You can create room. You've done flips. You've done these. So I had um, been a landlord already, like housing provider. I had wow. done it all. And yeah. there are quite a few components. You know, there's two banks involved. You need to do a decent size renovation, depending on what you're buying. So it's not a super entry level strategy, but no, it's, it's an it, advanced strategy. Yeah I, yeah, I call it an advanced. It's great, so. but it's an advanced strategy. Yeah. Uh, I the, would, the, the, the I problem would. I have with Burr is actually not Burr. I've done probably 30 or 40 of them over 20 years. But I hate any real estate strategy that's sold as easy and you can build a massive portfolio with zero money. I yes. hate that message because yep. it attracts a certain certain kind of person who yep. will bust out 99% of the time. Yep. And I think my big bone to pick with the coaching industry is the none of your own money. So that. if you do this correctly, in theory, at the end of the burr, you do have none of your own money in the deal. Like that is true, but you need money to get to that point. <laughs> exactly. So why with none of your own money? I just, I want to just, I yell at everyone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You and me both. I, I yeah, yeah, I get, I get pretty animated. Um, And there's also timing involved, right? There was no better time to do burr than 2020 to 2022 and a half. Right. In a half. Every, yeah. In a half. Right. It went, everything was straight up. Um, Burr's got to be a lot harder today. It, it is. Just, it has to be. Yeah. Right. Which means you could still do Burr, but you're, I'm going to guess you're planning on leaving some money in the deal today. Correct. You just have yep. to. And we're banking on about a third of the cash flow that I used to underwrite with. Right. So again, I want people to hear this, right? Burr still works, but again, everybody selling burrs get all your money out. And heaven forbid you get private money. That drives me bananas. Let's go borrow all the money from some, you know, DSCR loan. And then I'm going to get my mom or dad to kick in the repair money. Then you get to the end of this and you write, whoops, sorry, mom and dad. Can't get your money back. Yep. Yeah. I have a calculator that I use to underwrite everything. And there's a huge call out. It's called cash at refi. And if that number is negative, that is money out of your pocket Exactly. at the time of it. closing. And the bank will make you pay them to close the loan. So, and if you so, have the money, you're yeah. stuck. They're done, right? Yeah. You're, you're a forced seller. You just become yeah. a forced seller. You, so yep. you go from 11 units in early 2020 to, I think you said earlier, 70 units today. So you've been yeah. ranking on this birth. Yeah. yeah, we're doing about 25 a year. And you're keeping all of them. Yeah. I Damn, do bro. like one to two, maybe two to three flips a year to kind of, you know, keep the lights on and, you yeah. know, pay for my new Prius. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. The new old Prius. Yeah. 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 Respect. Um, respect. Yeah. So I do a couple flips, but if I possibly can keep it, I am keeping it. So when you look out and you think about eight or 9% rates, because it's probably 9% refis today, although rates are down yeah. the last few days. Pretty close. Um, do you slow down? No. <laughs> I love it. Absolutely not. No, okay. I, I right. don't because because of the region where I'm investing, I have studied Austin and Columbus and there's a lot of similar economic factors. Ooh, the, okay. the Midwest is booming for real estate. You know, people are leaving the coast. They're coming central. Um, you know, like I said, I didn't even know anything about Ohio. And yeah. I am actually like a pretty big fan girl now. Ohio is fantastic. Everyone is so nice. The cost of living, I mean, the weather's not great, but the summers are nice. It is it's just an easy place to live. It okay. really is. It's a it's a fantastic lifestyle we have. So awesome. that's attracting people. It really is. And I don't think yeah. people know Columbus is actually the 14th biggest city in the US. Fake Swear news. to you. Look I'm going to look that up. 
I'm gonna we just passed San Diego. Wow. Yes. All right. Taking out San Diego, Columbus. Yeah. Shout out to you. I think it may be 13 now. So we're we're booming. We have yeah. a huge housing shortage that's predicted for the next 10 years. You know, yes, rates hurt. I'm not here for the cash flow. Okay. I am so what here are you here for? The equity and the principal pay down. But you okay. Uh, hold on. You just you just crossed the red line for me. Let's You're, hear so, it. So so you didn't say this, but when I hear people say that, I have to dig in. Okay. So no, when you good. do your cash out refi, will you accept negative cash flow? No. Okay. Not today. Well, and next year I may. If we keep really? going to work today, I won't. But like but, I but, okay, listen. Not- oh, hold on. Time out. <laughs> Remember the audience watching this. Yes, okay. you have 70 units. Yeah. Yes. You can you can you can wash a negative with a positive. I get yes. it. But that's not most people. Most people get into this, they get out of a burr, they have to, and again, I my third my first property I refied made an alligator. That's what I call negative cash flow because an alligator is painful to be eaten by. Um most you can't have negative cash flow. It's unacceptable, in my opinion. Now, if you have okay. 70 units, do your thing, but most people that's unacceptable. Leave, leave more money in the deal. Is my advice. Okay. First negative that, cash I mean, flow. Yeah. Okay. I I would love to uh I'm I'm not there yet. So I haven't underwritten anything with negative cash flow. But oh, even, okay. no, no, okay. well, I've underwritten it, but I haven't bought it. But even a year ago, I wouldn't leave more than 10K in a deal. Today it's closer Just to as 20. a rule of thumb. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's my buy box. But yeah. now it's closer to 20 because it's the only way I can buy real estate. Exactly. Okay. And I, got I, I, I feel better. I am telling you, yeah. And I won't today accept negative cash flow. I understand how a new investor like literally could not. But when you have 70, you know, we'll probably be at 100 by the end of next year. I will be at 100 by the end of the year. By the end of next year. I love if, this. This is awesome. I mean, at that pace, I can take it. And yeah, of course. The goal is, you know, when rates come down, I refi and I get out of it. And, you know, I maybe pull out some equity at that time. All I know is that the we don't buy on speculation. The numbers make sense today, but right. history says that real estate increases yeah. in value and someone else is paying down my principal. So I'm I'm willing to take the risk. Do you uh, do you only get 30 year arms or are you gambling on like five one arms or 30 year money? Do you get arms when you refire? What do you do? We so my DSCR lender right now is actually better terms on okay. a 30 year. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. A lot of them are today. It's shocking. Yeah. Right? That's not normal. I know. I was surprised. Yeah. Yeah. Sierra Lynch. Yeah. Fixed for 30. That's good. Um, How do you want to wrap this up? How should people follow you, reach out to you? Again, you're probably doing lots of amazing stuff. How should people follow we are. you? So I run a Facebook group called Unlocked and we nice. do tons of, I go live trainings every Tuesday, uh, two o'clock Eastern. And okay. um, what else? Lots of, you know, freebies, giveaways, all that stuff. It's a really active community. So okay. I would say, can you, can you post the link? Sure. Of course. Yeah. Cool. Just send it to, if yeah, you want so to send it to me in a chat or text or whatever. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'll share the link with you. But the Facebook group is the best place to be. That's just unlock. Yeah. It's unlocked. Um, learn to buy and manage long-term rentals. Okay. Yeah. Send me the link. I will make it the first line of the description. Jesse, you are amazing. I'm so glad we connected. We should do this again. Um, Congrats on everything. It's uh, yeah, thank you. This, this is fun to hear. All right. Have a wonderful day. It's been a wild ride. Yeah. Thanks there for you your go. time. Just, it's just starting, Jesse. You've got decades ahead. So enjoy yeah. the ride.